things that we are given to uh, partake and participate in God's salvation. Mm -hmm. the, the most yeah. treasured possession that we are given to possess is an intimate knowledge of the only true God in Jesus Christ whom he has sent. And in, in, as, as we consider these things, there's, there's purpose in this. And our God is a God who does nothing without a cause. There's, there's, all, there's divine purpose in, in everything he has, he has said, he is working, he is revealing. It's under the fulfilling of his eternal purpose that he's purposed in Christ. And the very <coughs> solidity and sureness of God's go so great salvation is revealed in the very person of God himself. And that which God has purposed, and that which God has desired, and that which God has willed. Amen. These are, this, is, this is the solidity of the foundation. Mm -hmm. And also in the very one, his provision, the provision that God has provided in the fulfilling all that he has purposed. Amen. And so like the prophets say, we, we are in full accord that salvation is of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now while we, men do now, by faith, partake, and enter into God's working of salvation, there would be no partaking or participation in that salvation apart from the foundation being sure and steadfast. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, salvation requires a, a foundation. But it is a foundation which no man could lay. Yeah. But laid it must be. Amen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Mm -hmm. That's the announcement of the Almighty God. He was going to lay this foundation, and he has. And now because of that solid foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. See, there's, there's the benefit coming to those who believe. Because God has laid the foundation. Amen. Now the Apostle Paul would identify the one who is that foundation? 1 Corinthians 3.11 For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah. So we've come together to preach Christ. Amen. And to declare the truth that Jesus is the most vital and necessary provision of God unto the fulfilling of his so great salvation. Amen. And we do affirm that which the scripture reveals concerning God's high priest. Amen. From the very beginning of the record that God has given concerning his son, and I do say from the very beginning of that record, which is Moses and the prophets and the Psalms, because they do testify of Jesus. Amen. This is not just our opinion. This is something that has been revealed from heaven. Mm -hmm. That this is what Moses and the prophets and the Psalms were in truth speaking about. They were testifying of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And one of the testimonies that we, we do get from Moses and the prophets and the Psalms and the gospel is that without such a high priest as Jesus, not a single man would be able to come into the presence of God, let alone dwell with him forever. We need this high priest. Now, for this reason, or for this cause, God would choose his high priest himself. He would choose one... If one is going to come and minister before God, before the holy, holy, holy God, this minister must be like unto him. And as we have heard, this minister must be holy. He must be separate from Amen. sinners. He must be undefiled and higher than heavens because God is. Amen. So he's going to minister before God. He's got to be like unto God. So it would be God that would choose his high priest. And since this would not be anyone that could be of an earthly position, he says, therefore no man taketh this honor unto himself, mm -hmm. but he is a call of God. Amen. And God did call Jesus into this most honorable position of high priest. God did the calling. He did it even before the foundations of the world. For God's wisdom had determined, he had known the necessity of this high priest in order to the fulfilling of his purpose. There was a necessity of this priest. And so he began to move the holy men of God to start talking about this necessity and about what God would do in the bringing up and the raising up of this high priest. Amen. 
in Psalm 110, see David, David was given to see this. This was something that had occurred before the foundations of the world, and yet God would reveal this to David, this man after God's own heart. He was given to see something about God here and about his son. He said, the Lord, the Lord Jehovah, said unto my Lord, David wasn't fully aware of who this was, but he knew something about him. He says, this is my Lord. God, God has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Now, reasonable men, men, men that reason upon the scripture, who know God, so you should take note when God swears an oath. Mm-hmm. When Almighty God goes on record to swear an oath, Amen. we need to take it, we need to give the more earnest heed to this. Amen. God has made an oath here about this one. There's implications about his 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 setting his his king upon his holy hill of Zion and about affirming that there is that this this one is going to be a priest forever. Amen. So, having been called of God unto being God's high priest, God would anoint Jesus for this most vital position in the kingdom. Jesus himself affirmed this to be true. Him saying in Luke 4, 18 and 19, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he, God, hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. God hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, Recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. See, God anointed Jesus for this very work. And yet there were there was one more thing that had to that Jesus would have to need to partake of, and to him being that faithful and merciful high priest and the God in things pertaining to God. He had to be made perfect for his high calling of God. The word would have to become flesh Amen. and dwell among men. Amen. And so the scripture says, being found in the fashion of a man, Jesus' perfection of high priest came by the things which he suffered in the days of his flesh. Amen. He was touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He was tempted in all points as we were, yet without sin. Now here's the, here's the, the, the main <coughs> separating point of Jesus from the rest of men. He needed a he needed one that was holy, separate from sinners. And when he looked upon the, the, the race of men, there were none. There were none. So he says his own arm brought salvation. Amen. And then Jesus, after having passed the testing of God and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. And to all them that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now these are some of the things that we continue to open up about the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ being our great high priest. And this is what I would I desire by the grace of God to continue to affirm unto you. See, when it comes to working God's working salvation in the midst of the earth, talking about a God who will fulfill things to the minutest detail. Amen. In order for this to occur, Jesus is absolutely vital and essential. Amen. From its very conception, mm-hmm. and its purposing, that purposing between God and the Word, in, in, a, in eternity past, before the worlds were formed, Jesus was absolutely vital and necessary. Amen. And unto the completion of God's so great salvation. See, God's, the, the, the Son's desire, Jesus' desire, is to fulfill God's purpose. Amen. See, this is this Amen. is this is this is what Jesus is working unto. He's looking towards that day when the when the Father is there and looking upon this great innumerable company of men. He's looking upon them from every tongue and nation and tribe and people, mm-hmm. and he declares to his son, "It is done." Amen. Well done, son. Well done. Amen. That's what Jesus is working unto. Amen. And every working in between, from conception to, to fulfillment, Jesus is the preeminent one. Amen. And he is the needful and necessary one. Mm-hmm. Jesus said it this way concerning himself, without me you can do nothing. Amen. So not only would Jesus have to finish the work God gave him to do on the earth, 
Jesus would have to complete the work of salvation, of saving men to the uttermost by his life. Romans 5.10. We've touched on that a bit. But you think about that. What life is he talking about? He's being saved by their life. His life. Is it with the life on earth? No. He's talking about his exalted life now at the right hand of the majesty on high. Amen. Having risen from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the majesty on high, the scripture says, ordained for men mm -hmm. and high priest. Amen. Of God. Now, the scripture does announce with great glory and power that the main work that Jesus accomplished and finished in the earth was done by his death on the cross. Jesus making known that this commandment was of the Father and he gave it to him to lay down his life and to take it again. Now, this Jesus was speaking of his death and of his resurrection from the dead. Two works that had to be accomplished here. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking at. Amen. The Apostle <clears throat> Paul would, would say this way, Jesus was delivered for our offenses. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus was delivered. God delivered him up for us all because of our offenses. He had to, he had to die because of our offenses. Mm -hmm. And die he did. Jesus did die on the cross. And by his sacrifice, he did put away the sin of the world. But it also says he was raised for our justification. Amen. Amen. Now, Jesus' resurrection from the dead did declare and affirm the accomplishments of his death. But the truth of his accomplished death must be ministered to the hearts and conscience of the people. Amen. They had to know for themselves what did Jesus truly accomplish. Mm -hmm. Jesus was raised to minister that truth that we are justified by his blood. Mm -hmm. He was going to minister that truth to, the, to everyone that come to God by him. See, the reason that they're coming to God by him because they are justified before God. But yet, this had to be made known. In order for men to take the cup of salvation, not only must they be justified before God, they must know the truth for themselves in order to partake of that cup. And, part, and partake they do through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And when it comes to God not dealing with us after our sins, not rewarding us according to our iniquities, it's because Jesus is the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Amen. He took them away as far as the east is from the west. So far has he removed our transgressions from us. Amen. Now this glorious truth is being ministered to God's people through our faithful and merciful high priest, who Amen. now appears in the presence of God for us. Amen. The apostles also would be faithfully preachers and teachers of this good news of what Jesus' death did accomplish. They were sent by the Father, and they announced he was at the, who once in the end of the world he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. See, Jesus, from this perspective, made an appearance in the earth with a purpose of God in mind to put away sin. That's, how, that's what he appeared for, the apostles announcing this. Amen. So we're, we're seeing a divine purpose being, being revealed here. His appearance wasn't a coincidence. He was sent by the Father. Mm -hmm. He appeared in the world to put away sin by Amen. the sacrifice of himself. But as is, is the, the manner of the scripture and the working of the Holy Spirit, there's many things to be seen here about this, this revelation of Jesus' appearing. One of the things I thought about was that Jesus' appearing are always accompanied by manifestations of great glory and power. And when Jesus appears, that's what, 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 what accompanies him. Great glory and power. Power that's accomplishing it's an accomplishing power. It's accomplishing the, the will of God. It's never commonplace. Jesus' appearances are never commonplace. They are epochal in nature. In their very nature. These are, these are great occurrences. And they're of an increasing nature. Because they are, they, we are given to know that the accomplishing of that which God purposed 
is right on the horizon. See, when Jesus appears, we know something marvelous is going to happen. Yeah, amen. God is going to accomplish something when Jesus appears. Amen. And it's documented for us, see. It's ministering to faith. Amen. It's ministering to our faith about Jesus here. See, the Lord, the Lord from heaven is going to accomplish something for God. You think about his first appearance. He was, he was accompanied by great glory. Remember, remember the, what, what, here's what the scripture says in, in, in Hebrews 1. We, heard, we were ministered to this about him being superior to the angels. He was given a, a more excellent name than they in verse 4. And, and, and here's, here's the conclusion of the, uh, the, the Hebrew writer. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Which of the angels was ever given this honor by God? But now, now, see this announcement was made, and now he was going to appear in the world. And again, in verse 6, when he bringeth into the first born begotten into the world, he saith, Let all the angels of God worship him. Amen. Amen. Talking about a man here. He's commanding the angels, these ones high in authority and power, who, who, who come before the very throne of God. He says, all these angels, you worship him. Amen. And he's beginning to show something. He's beginning to open up this truth and reality of who Jesus really is. Amen. And of the angels, he saith, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. See, so there's a, there's a working of God in this manner of the exaltation of Christ, even him sending him into the world, see? Great glory is accompanying this. When he, when he was in, in, his, in his nativity, if you remember, the, the angels just burst forth. They burst forth into the earth in glory, giving glory to God about Messiah, the Savior, has, has been born. And throughout his life, miracles and wonders and signs are being accomplished. See, the, the appearing of Jesus the first time was accompanied by great glory and power. But I want, to, I want to show to you that each one of these appearings is of an increasing nature, with full of glory, even more glory, as, 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 we, as we continue to search the scriptures of this truth. We're considering now this, 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 this uh, Jesus now appearing in the presence of God for us. Amen. And thinking about this now, if, if this kind of glory accompanied Jesus in his first appearing, what, what, what kind of glory are we talking about now that he's appearing in the presence of God for us? Mm -hmm. Well, it's of, a, it's, it's of a greater glory it's a, because it's of a, of a greater nature. God, he's doing a greater work, if you will. He's bringing, he's bringing many sons to glory. Amen. So now that we've been given this, to, to, to see this, this truth about Jesus appearing in the earth, that he, he accomplished the work. He accomplished the work that God sent him to do. And the apostles would write it in this manner, for we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. See, this is talking about the, the finished work on, on the earth. We were made righteous by the obedience of Jesus, who obeyed God even unto death, even the death of the cross. Jesus was crucified that the body of sin might be destroyed. In his death, God condemned sin in the flesh of his son. Through the blood of his cross, Jesus made peace with God for us. Through the blood of his cross, Jesus destroyed him with the power of death, which is the devil. He spoiled principalities and powers, making a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Through Jesus' death, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now, this is glorious. This is a glorious, accomplished work of Christ. When he hung on the cross, he said, it is done. It is finished. This work that you've given me to do, Father, in the earth, I have accomplished it. Amen. But now, see, the scripture does announce he's been raised from the dead. Yeah. He's been raised from the dead. And, this is, and, his, and his coming into, into, into heaven now is going to be accompanied by great glory and power. Amen. This great glory and power... <clears throat> would be would be an announcement of what Jesus was going to be doing now, if you will. And as he appeared, see, he appeared in heaven. It says he was received. Now think about that word. A man. A man is received in heaven. A, he a man is being received by God in heaven. Amen. And God exalts him. 
and he says, sit down at my right hand. Amen. He never said this to any angel, never, any, no other created being. But to Jesus, the man Christ Jesus, he says, you sit at my right hand. Amen. And unto him, as the scripture says, having received of God power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. God gave this all. He gave, the, if you will, the kingdom to his son. He gave it to him all. For one portion as a reward for that which he has accomplished. See, he's given him a name above every name. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. He received all this of God, but it was also necessary in order to fulfill the, the, the purpose of God. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've talked about blessing so far. We've talked about power. We've talked about wisdom and strength. These are all the things God gave to Jesus. And now he's ministering them unto us. Unto those who shall be the heirs of salvation. See, Jesus is, is, is ministering this, this, these riches, if you will, that God has given them. Amen. So we've been given to see through the scripture that all that the death of Jesus Christ accomplished is true. Absolutely every one of those things is true. About him putting away the sin of the world. About him destroying him that has the power of death, the devil. About the spoiling of the principalities and powers. All of that is absolutely true. Because this is what God determined him to accomplish. Jesus did finish that work God gave him to do on the earth. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to bringing that truth to bear upon the conscience of his people, when it comes for you to know the truth about what Jesus did for your sins, that your sins are forgiven, that your sins and iniquity God remembers no more, this requires a living high priest who is empowered by God to declare you clean. That's the very empowerment by which we walk in the newness of life before the holy, holy, holy God. You will not walk before the holy God if you are defiled. Amen. This was the announcement that he was made. This high priest is undefiled. What makes you think you're going to walk before God if you're defiled? The high priest had to be holy. What makes you think you're going to walk before God if you're not holy? Well, see, God, Jesus is going to minister that truth to you of what he's accomplished. And God began to make this truth known of the necessity of the high priest in this work. And he did it through the Aaronic priesthood. Now, again, as, as we continue to, to look in, at the Aaronic priesthood, it's not to focus our, sets of, our sights upon the Aaronic priesthood, but it's in the comparison about the better priesthood, right. yeah. about Jesus' priesthood. Amen. Because we're going to see, as we heard, it was weak. It was weak through the flesh. Amen. But God is making known some truths about this high priest and of his working. But I want to I point out of a better working of our Lord Jesus Christ. One of these is in Leviticus, the 13th chapter, as he, as he begins to talk about the, the high priest. In the 13th, 13th chapter of Leviticus, the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have the skin of his flesh arising, a scab or a bright spot, and it be in his flesh, I mean, in his, the skin of his flesh, like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, only to one of his sons, the priest. This was the Aaronic priesthood, the high priesthood, and his sons were, were going to, to follow in this lineage. And the priest was going to look on the plague in the skin of his flesh. Now the priest was going to look with this in order to make a determination. Or he was going to make a diagnosis, if you will, of, of what was occurring here. But see, how he's, his diagnosis is things pertaining to the flesh. That's what Aaron's priesthood is designated for. That's not Jesus's. Jesus is a better priesthood. Amen. He's going to make a diagnosis of the soul and the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. In verse 6 it says the priest shall look upon him. See, he's, he's beginning to, to, to diagnose what's going on here. Verse 10 says the priest shall see him. Verse 13 says the priest shall consider. And then behold, if the leprosy has covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean 
that hath the plague, the plague, it is all turned white. He is clean. That's the pro pronouncement of the priest. You think about what it said. Though you, <coughs> when, 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 when God was talking through through Isaiah and reasoning upon these things, he's let's reason about these things. Though your sins be as scarlet, they're going to be white as yeah. snow. Amen. Here's here's the diagnosis. The priest is the one who says you're clean. See? In verse 17, he says, The priest shall see him. Behold, that the plague be turned into white. Then the, pronounce, the priest shall pronounce him clean that he hath the plague. And here's his perfect assessment. He is clean. See? The priest was the one who, who would be able to make this determination of, the, of, the, of the, this, this manner of uh, sin and salvation. He was the one who was Saying what you're clean. See? We need we need such a high priest to make this known upon our conscience that we are clean. Amen. Amen. Jesus has been exalted to the right hand of the Majesty on high to minister this truth unto the people of God, and He makes true and good diagnosis of our souls and the spirits. For those who are washed from our sins in the blood of Christ. The pronouncement of the high priest is sure before God. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, they, they were, your sins were, they were as scarlet, but they are now white as snow. Jesus, the priest, the high priest declares, though they were red like crimson, they are as wool. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not just anchored here in, in Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. The effectuality of the high priest, our Lord Jesus Christ, he is spoken about through his apostles as well. This is how Paul said it. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Know ye not, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. That's the diagnosis. There it is. Such were some of you. Yeah. But here's the good news. But ye are washed. Amen. But ye are sanctified. Amen. But ye are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. Amen. See, that's the, that's the diagnosis of the great high priest to everyone that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And he's ministering that truth to our very consciences. This true diagnosis, the great high priest, to all them that are buried with Christ by baptism into death, and have been raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, they're now walking in the newness of life. And we do give thanks and praise unto God for this great salvation. Amen. See, not only did he justify us through his blood, he's ministering the truth of that justification to our consciences, mm -hmm. that we might draw near unto God. There will be no drawing near to God unless your conscience is purged from dead works. Amen. But as the scripture has shown before, there's, there's even more glory. See, there's more glory that's accompanying this appearance. Because Jesus is seen <clears throat> and now appearing in the presence of God for us. In this matter of, a, of the new life, we've been raised to walk in newness of life. But in that race to walk in newness of light, life, we're brought into a fight. Mm -hmm. But it's a good fight. Scripture says it's a good fight. It's a good fight of faith. Amen. In that fight, though, we are brought into times of being troubled on every side. Mm -hmm. Without we're fightings, within we're fears. There's some of the there's some of the warfare that we're all engaged in here in Christ Jesus. But then there's the word of confirmation of hope. Nevertheless, God has comforted us that are cast down. Now, how does God comfort us that are cast down? He's going to show us Jesus. Amen. He says, consider him. Consider him who suffered these things. Consider him. Amen. See? Consider him that I raised from the dead. Consider him who's been exalted to the right hand of the majesty on high. Consider him who is now appearing in the presence of God for you. This high priest will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. He will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. See, here's the working of the high priest. Amen. Yeah. 
His work is that he's made you holy, he's going to keep you holy. He's made you undefiled, he's going to keep you undefiled. See, this is his working. Amen. And he's faithful in this work. We heard that someplace. Our high priest himself has suffered being tempted. And now he is able to succor. Or he's able to help. He's able to come to your aid in the time of need. At time of need, when you're wrestling with temptation, when, you're, when, you're, when your flesh is, is man, trying to manifest itself under, under sin, he's able, to, he's able to succor them that are tempted. Because he's been touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He was tempted in all points like we are, yet without sin. See, that's yeah. our high priest. Mm -hmm. See, he's able to minister. He's able to strengthen. He's able to keep you from falling. See, wherever, if any one of us, if any man is ever going to make it to glory, we need such a high priest. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. An exceeding better high priest mm -hmm. than that of Aaron. Amen. For Aaron's high priest enablement for God's people came only after they sinned. Mm -hmm. See, when, when, when after, after someone sinned, well then, then Aaron's priesthood came into play, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It was after they sinned. After they transgressed the law. But they came with no provision for the purging of the conscience. Amen. From that sin and transgression that had been committed. That's when, they, that's when they brought their sacrifice to Aaron. After they had sinned. But we need a high priest who, from the throne of grace, bestows grace unto us in our time of need that we sin not. See, this is a greater high priest. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's able to keep you from falling, see? Yeah. Amen. But we also know something else of this great high priest. If we do sin, brother. Mm -hmm. If we do sin, he is faithful and merciful. Amen. That we would obtain mercy from him as we confess our sin unto him, and he would be faithful and just to forgive our sins and Amen. cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. See? This is this is our this is our great high priest here that we are given to, to know about in the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother, in order to be kept from falling, and we're going to be presented faultless before the presence of God's glory. Yes. See, with, with, with men this is impossible. Right. But with God all things are possible, and we see that as we see our Lord Jesus Christ exalted to the right hand of the majesty on high. Mm -hmm. We conclude that we need this high priest, but one that is far better than that of Aaron. Mm -hmm. Because when you search the scriptures, from the very first time Aaron put on the high priest's garments till the destruction of the temple in A.D. 70, some 1,500 years of time that we can, we can search out and check this out, there is not a single instance, no, not one, whereby Aaron's priesthood ever brought one person into the presence of God, let alone all the sons. Not one time, Amen. not one time did Aaron's priesthood bring a person into the presence of God. But we've gathered and come together to declare some good news. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we have such a better high priest. Mm -hmm. The man Christ Jesus. Who is set at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. And he is a minister of the sanctuary. And the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched in that man. And he's now appearing in the presence of God for us. Amen. To bring many sons to glory. Amen. Amen. Aaron couldn't bring one. Jesus is bringing many sons to glory. Yeah. So with the necessity for the sons to not only make it to glory, but also to be prepared for the world to come and for the ages to come, God's high priest is absolutely essential. The knowing of the only true God in Jesus Christ is in order to come unto him and partake of the necessary benefits that he himself provides. These things are being made known. They're being, they're being ministered to our conscience. See about that we're able to draw near. We're able to come unto God through Him, because He's He's ministered this truth of He's purged our conscience. See, He's He's He's, per, he's ministered the truth of the forgiveness of your sins. See, it's good to it's it's you know we know we know this these things are being proclaimed. 
He's, 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 he's the guy, he took away the sin of the world. But it comes down to each of us individually. Has he taken away my sins? I need to know that he's taken away my sins. Well, the high priest is ministering this under, under your conscience. Amen. And it's God's manner. See, God is a, God is a revealer. He, he wants his people to know these things. Mm-hmm. And so he would go to great lengths to make his high priest known. He would rise up early and speak, sending forth Moses and the prophets and the psalmists. And they would faithfully declare their testimony of Jesus given to them. Mm-hmm. And through the glorious gospel, which Jesus and his apostles did preach, going so far as to even make provision to show, to show Jesus in his exalted position at the right hand of God, our great high priest, to the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos. Remember the account? Revelation 1. Beginning in verse 13. The Apostle John was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. He heard the sound of a great voice. And turning to see that voice which spoke unto him, he saw one like the Son of Man. Take note here. With a clothed with a garment down to the foot. Amen. And gird about the paps with a golden girdle. Now to those who are not familiar with Moses and the prophets and the Psalms, this sight would mean absolutely nothing. But one who is familiar with, with that which Moses and the prophets and the Psalms talk about, They would instantly recognize the garments of the high priest. And Jesus was being shown in the midst of the churches in the garments of the high priest. Amen. 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 And Jesus wanted John, not only John to know about this, he wanted his people to know about this. Verse 17, John's commentary. When I, John, saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. See, this is... The exalted Christ here being revealed unto John. We know it's a provision. It wasn't in the fullness of his glory. But was enough. He wanted to show something to John here. And Jesus laid his right hand upon him and said, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive for any more. See, Jesus, I mean, he, John knew this of Jesus. He, he fellowshiped with him on, on the earth. He handled the bread of life. He knew this. He knew that he died. He knew that he raised. And now he knew for certain that he was exalted. For he had the key, has the keys of heaven, of hell and death. And here's his instructions to John. He says, write these things which thou hast seen. You write them down. And the things which are, and the things that which shall be after, you keep a record of this. Because it's vital and the strengthening of the faith of the people of God. And that's in the truth that there is a living high priest now appearing in the presence of God for us. God showed the Apostle John, the exalted Jesus, in the holy garments of the high priest. Clothed in the robe, in the broidered coat, in the golden girdle. From its first mention in Exodus chapter 28 verse 4, that's where he talks about the, the holy garments of the high priest. Mm-hmm. He talked about the broidered coat and the girdle. He said these are the holy garments for Aaron and his sons, the lineage of the high priest, that they may minister unto God in the priest's office. When you were given to see the high priest, these are the kind of things that you start thinking about. What, what, is, it that, what is it that distinguishes this one dressed in such a manner? Well, he's going to minister unto God. That's what he's going to do. He's going to minister unto God in the priest's office. And so Jesus again instructed John, verse 11 of Revelation 1, What thou seest, write it in a book and send it unto the churches. And how vital this, this, this declaration of truth of Jesus being exalted to the right hand of God as God's faithful and merciful high priest. He showed it. He showed it to the apostle that the apostle would show it to the churches, that their faith would be strengthened, that they would draw an eye unto God because we have such a high priest. Now the scripture, 
does to reveal the manner of our new life in Christ Jesus. That manner is this. The just shall live by faith. Amen. That's yes. the manner of the new life. Christ. We, we do live by faith. It's recorded in, in the prophets. It's recorded in the, in the gospels, in the, in, the, in the epistles. This is the truth. We walk by faith. The ones that are justified through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus do live and move and have our being in the Lord. That's, that's, that's why this new life is before God. And it is by faith that we do so. Amen. And faith is substantive and evidential. It is by faith that we are being ready for the world to come and the ages to come. And even now, see, we are tasting of the powers of the world to come. See, this is all being ministered by our high priest. See, by faith, by faith now, we are partaking of that which is yet to come. See, faith is an enabler of the new man. Amen. Yeah. The new man has senses. Amen. Senses that... <coughs> Are not, are not earthbound. They're, they're into the heavenlies. And again, the scripture does talk about this. <clears throat> Hebrews 6, 5. By faith, we also taste the good word of God. <coughs> we taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 34, 8. See, even the psalmist was given to see some of this. About tasting and seeing. The senses are being exercised in the new man. You think about it that way. When you start looking into the scripture, you're exercising your senses of the new man. Amen. Hebrews 11, 27 says, By faith we also see him that's invisible. We're given, we're given sight into, into seeing that which cannot be seen. And by faith we are given to hear the sounds of the heavenly places and of him that speaketh from heaven. Hebrews 12, 25. We want to finish <coughs> talking about some of these sounds from heaven. Glorious sounds from heaven to instill confidence and hope in the people of God. They do. See, th th these, these things that God is, is revealing are empowered, see, to do these very things. They're going to they're strengthen your faith. They're going to establish you in the faith. This is, this is the, the power of the word of God. And so I exhort you to hear it. For it will accomplish this in those who hear. It will strengthen you to come boldly to the throne of grace. 